I've come to expect that people involved with the WWE are going to say very stupid pro WWE propaganda puppet type of things. You know, I, I come to expect that. But there are certain individuals that I look at and I say, I think they have more respect for themselves and maybe it's just because I have such a tremendous respect for them that I would expect them to be above that and expect them to be better than that and not buy into that and not contribute to that problem. Because in part, I think a major problem for the WWE is there's too much, yes, 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 you know, we agree with everything. There's not enough, no, 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 uh, we really need to think about this. There's not enough conflict in a positive way to challenge ideas and get the best out of the company. Um, Chris Jericho is one of those individuals that I have a tremendous amount of respect for, a guy that's worked his ass off over the years, paid his dues, wrestled around the world, became a big star, you know, helped younger new talents out, helped get them on the map, helped get them over, sometimes even to his own detriment. A guy who went off and was able to branch outside of wrestling into Fozzie, what have you, but still come back because he loves it and he has a passion for it. Again, a guy that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. So it really bothers me when I hear somebody like Chris Jericho, who I've always thought of being kind of a straight shooter, a guy that was always kind of honest, that didn't always just sit there and say things in a pro-WWE way. When he says somebody something so stupid, you know, it really catches me off guard and really disappoints me. In a recent interview, he was asked, in recent years, you've come back and put over talents such as Fandango and Bray Wyatt. Do you think WWE's dropped the ball with them since? And he says, I quote, uh, I mean, put them over, beat them, or both. It's just a matter of working with new characters and new guys. WWE doesn't drop balls. Your career goes in waves. It goes in cycles. I know that more than anybody else. Sometimes you work on top. Sometimes you're not. And when you're not, it's up to you to make your mark and get back on track again. I think that WWE has a plan and never tries to sabotage anybody on purpose. Why would they do that? It costs them money. Someone like Bray Wyatt has a huge potential, huge upside. He's got a long way to go, so there are no worries and no rush. Fandango, I thought, was kind of a one-trick pony as far as his character and gimmick go. There's only so much you can do with it. I think it's time to update that character and take it to another place because you can only do so much with a character like that. Unquote. I would expect somebody that I've always viewed as like a WWE ass kisser to say this. Uh, I would expect like Triple H to say something like this in an interview because he has corporate interest, he has personal interest to make sure that he spins things in a pro-WWE way. I'd expect Vince to say something like this. I'd expect Stephanie to say something like this. But I'm very disappointed to hear somebody like Chris Jericho spew this type of hot garbage, this unbelievable nonsense, out of his diarrhea mouth. Of all the people that should know better, that damn well better know better. Chris Jericho's the one to say this shit. I mean, where do you even begin with this hot garbage? The WWE doesn't drop balls. Your career goes in waves. It goes in cycles. Now, let me put it to you this way. In order to use that analogy, Chris Jericho, of going in cycles and going in waves, that means you actually have to get all the way to the top in order to come back down. And it's so often the case, like in the case of a Cena or an Orton, they got up that wave and they've pretty much stayed at the crest of that wave the past 8, 9, 10 damn years. There's never been any real go down. It's been up and then we fucking stay there. And pretty much anybody else, not named like a Triple H or a Shawn Michaels for the most part, it's you kind of get up the wave and then you get pushed back down. You kind of try to surf that wave again and you get pushed back down and then the wave collapses over you. Breakfast Club rules, bitches. To sit there and say that the WWE doesn't drop balls is fucking ridiculous. When Chris Jericho on his own podcast a few months ago was talking with his guest Edge about how the WWE and John Cena dropped the ball at SummerSlam 2010 when they didn't have Wade Barrett in the Nexus go over Team WWE. A lot of you who are watching this, have listened to that interview, have used that as a validation for why you hate John Cena and his politicking. Well, you know what? What I can't understand is Jer Jericho's talking about that a few months ago Basically saying the WWE dropped the ball. Now he's coming back and saying the WWE doesn't drop balls. Your career goes in waves. It goes in cycles. No, it really doesn't. The WWE consistently dropped balls, Chris Jericho, and you know this. They consistently dropped the damn ball. There is no cycle. There's not this rotation up and down the damn card. It's either you're one of these guys and you always freaking stay there no matter what, and your spot is assured, 
or you're here and you're kind of going laterally in this direction to only go back down here, or you're here, you get about here, and then you go out here where we can't even freaking see you, or you stay right here. It's a whole lot of lateral, not a whole lot of vertical. What that means, Chris Jericho, is that instead of the waves that you're talking about, instead of the cycles, it's more of a spinning of the wheels, and that's an entirely different thing. You're going to tell me the WWE didn't drop the ball with Wade Barrett in the Nexus? You're going to tell me the WWE didn't drop the ball with the Kofi Kingston push a few years ago? You're going to tell me the WWE didn't drop the ball with freaking Ryback? Especially if I remember correctly, because you said Ryback is the guy that they should go all the way with, regardless if The Rock was going to wrestle for the belt at the Royal Rumble or not. You said that they needed to strike while the iron was hot, similar to what I did. But now, all of a sudden, is it because the WWE is paying you more money or something you've changed your opinion on this sometimes you work on top but sometimes you don't the only time you seem to work on top in the wwe is if you're feuding with cena orton or triple h any other time you're back down in the middle or the bottom that's no cycle that's just grabbing you up quickly just to throw you back down the wave or the mountaintop if you will it's up to you to make your mark and get back on track again that's naive and ridiculous. I'd expect stupid wrestling fans to say hot garbage like this, not somebody that spent 20-plus years in the damn business and spent a decade and a half in different capacities working for the WWE. To sit there and say that it's up to you to make your mark, what do you say about a guy like Cesaro, a guy that was getting a tremendous reaction, a guy that wins the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 30? The crowd's ready to pop for him as a babyface. They want this. They need this. They're feeling this. Then the next night, they associate his ass with fucking Paul Heyman, so that way they can keep payment on television. They sabotage Cesaro that way. There was no freaking wave. It was back down to the bottom with him. You're telling me that the WWE didn't sabotage Cesaro in any way, shape, or form. You're telling me the WWE didn't sabotage CM Punk's 434-day title reign when you feuded with them for that title. At no point in time did any of your title matches on pay-per-view main event the damn show. In fact, if I remember correctly, your title match at Elimination Chamber opened the freaking show. Don't tell me that the WWE doesn't intentionally sabotage people. They do it on a consistent basis. This is even where the most you know, pro wrestling fans and the most pro um, WWE marks would even have to acknowledge that at some point in time the WWE has sabotaged somebody. And to sit there and say that it's solely up to you to make your mark is completely ridiculous. Because you see Bray Wyatt, a guy with getting thousands of people in every arena to light up their damn, se damn cell phones. A guy like Bray Wyatt getting just as big of a reaction as Daniel Bryan or anybody else in the freaking company. He's losing to John Cena at WrestleMania. He's losing the damn feud with him. And now they're utilizing him to launch off pushes for Harper and freaking Rowan. You're talking about somebody like Bray Wyatt has huge potential and huge upside. Well, no shit. That's why the fans got so far behind him. He's got a long way to go, so there's no worries and no rush. A ding-dong, dumb dick. It's 2014. Wade Barrett had a tremendous amount of potential. Before you sit there and just solely blame the injuries, look at all the dumb shit the WWE did with him over the years. Yeah, we can sit there and talk about potential. We can talk about upside, but this is just like in other sports. Sometimes that potential fucking kills you. You never actualize that potential. You never realize that damn potential. And we're sitting here and we're going to talk about Bray Wyatt in the same type of way or four or five damn years later. Well, at that point in time, the WWE is going to say, well, fuck it. We kind of half-assed it with them for four or five years. We're just bored with them. We're not going to freaking push them anymore. To sit there and say that the WWE doesn't try to sabotage anybody and why would they do that because it would cost them money is ridiculous. They have a consistent pattern and track record, especially during the PG era, of sabotaging careers and sabotaging pushes. Hell, in recent times. Bo Dallas is getting over. He's got a streak. He's got a shtick. And then for whatever the fuck reason, just because they can, they sabotage him by having him lose his freaking streak to R-Truth. Was there a story for that? Was there a purpose for that? Was there a reason for that? Was there a plan for this, as you would like to make so many people believe? No, it was just a dumb dick decision. It's ridiculous. They've sabotaged people like Ziggler over the years. He gets knocked the fuck out by a clumsy-ass swagger, so they push swagger and they bury Ziggler. And I'm not even a Ziggler fan, and I can fucking see that. They gave Punk a year-plus title reign and found ways to sabotage that by having matches like Johnny Ace versus John Cena main event pay-per-views. Christ almighty. 
And then when it comes to Fandango, you talk about there's only so much you could do with it. It's time to update the character. When you haven't even done that much with the character, when you don't even go that far with the character and you just give up on it, it doesn't matter what type of reboot you do because ultimately it's going to be the same damn thing. You cannot sit there, I think of clear conscience and mind, and actually believe this crap, can you? That's why it's so disappointing to me to hear Chris Jericho say something like this. They consistently pull out the rug on new characters. They consistently bury people. They consistently sabotage pushes. You're going to sit there and tell me at a time at the beginning of 2014, this year, when the fans were clearly clamoring for their guy, Daniel Bryan, to sit there and win the Royal Rumble, that the WWE didn't try to sit there and sabotage him just a little bit by having him lose to Bray Wyatt and not even be in the fucking Rumble to begin with. The fans were pissed, they were outraged, and rightfully so. It was one of these things that they finally had a chance to get something different, and instead the WWE undercut them in order to have Batista win the fucking Rumble. This is one of the most ridiculous and idiotic things I have ever heard come out of any wrestler's mouth. And of all people to say something like this, Chris Jericho, an individual that I think very highly of, an individual that I have a tremendous amount of respect for, that I know has a tremendous amount of business savvy and sense when it comes to professional wrestling. A guy that has been involved with the WWE for 15 damn years now. Of anybody is, that is anybody that is anybody that knows better and shouldn't be spewing this type of ridiculous um, pro-WWE propaganda. It's Chris Jericho. This is amazing. Any wrestling fan, I think, could tell you that what Chris Jericho said is stupid on so many different levels. WWE consistently drops balls. Why do you think we're still bitching about his fans in 2014 the need to create new top stars? Why? Because the WWE has sabotaged so many people and they dropped the balls on so many damn people and they've been so unwilling to get behind so many guys that it's the same fucking guys at the top. You can take your waves and your cycles and shove them straight up your ass because they don't exist. Every level of the WWE hierarchy is everybody spinning their damn wheels and staying in place. Why would they sabotage anybody? Because it would cost them money. So what they consistently do when they pound John Cena into the same damn spot day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year at the expense of anybody and everybody damn else. This is just stupid. And to sit there and say, don't worry about Bray Wyatt. There's no worries. There's no rush. Yes, there is. The WWE needs to start building the next generation. Damn it all. It can't always be about the same guys forever. It's not good from a product standpoint. It's not good from a business standpoint. And the fans at some point in time are eventually going to rebel and go away in bigger droves than you could possibly imagine. Because then they drop the ball with Bray Wyatt. And then he lingers for a couple of years. And then they do it with like a Dean Ambrose. And then a Seth Rollins. And then what the fuck do you got? A Roman Reigns that they would have no choice but to sit there and give the freaking Super Cena treatment. So instead of getting something new at the top, you're getting the same old type of shit just in a different package with a different guy. I wish more people in the wrestling business would think before they talk. I wish more people in the wrestling business had the courage to stand up to the WWE. I wish more people in the wrestling business understood just how ridiculous they sound when they say stupid shit like this. If somebody like me said it, that's one thing. Because I'm an idiot. I'm a wrestling fan. You expect us to say stupid shit like this when it comes from somebody like Chris Jericho of all fucking people. You wonder why the wrestling business is in the fucking shape it's in. If people like Chris Jericho actually believe this crap that he said to be true, then the entire company probably thinks it's true. The entire business thinks it's true. And the entire company and business thinks that everything is A-OK, -okay, okie dokie. Well, ding dong, dumb dick, it's not.